Softly, in the dusk, a woman is singing to me. Taking me back down the vista of years till I see a child sitting under the piano in the boom of the tingling strings and pressing the small poised feet of a mother who smiles as she sings. Well, I knew that Pam was going to be in New York for this particular period of time, so I, th I thought it would be interesting to work with her. And so it was, yeah, a weird chance thing, and, and, um, and so I, I Googled her <laughs> when I saw, you know, it's like an email, you know, for doing, like, hmm, what? And, and so then I Googled, and I listened, and I was like, oh, wow, she sounds amazing. <laughs> And then I thought, actually, it would be really interesting to bring Alvin in on this, because I know that Alvin has um, a lot of experience with improvisation and sort of more, I guess, sort of avant-garde theater pieces. And I pretty much have none. I have no experience with that. And so... Um, <laughs> you do now. <laughs> <laughs> she presented me. The, the platter with the things that we were going to have to eat. <laughs> oh, have to. That's not a good... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I didn't mean I, uh, that I was looking forward uh, okay. to eating. <laughs> I'm so used to improvising a lot of the times, and, the, and, and uh, there are bands I play with um, where there are set parts, and, but but uh, the level of dynamics is very different as opposed to working, with, let's say, with Simona, and there might be very subtle parts where a pianissimo is so extremely subtle. And normally if I'm on stage with, you know, drums, electric guitar, and bass, um, the, you know, piano in that setting is not, not as subtle, not as naked and out in the open, and so it, and so it, I found that I've been practicing, which I never used to do, to, but I enjoy it because I really want to do well and, and I really want to do the music justice. It's always about listening, I think, when you work with someone, and I, I guess it's true with acting too, is that you have to be able to listen to what the other person is doing and respond to it. And certainly even when you're playing, I mean, when I'm playing by myself, I have to listen to what's coming out of the piano and respond to that too. Um, and I think that Pam and Alvin are, are amazing listeners. Just think there, there's so many different ideas, or like for example today like when when we're playing this piece of music, we're playing this first movement of the Bach um, violin sonata, and and Alvin is reading, and the, a lot of this poem, like what it's saying, what's happening in there, you know, Simona, the, after we play, she says, "Oh wow, this is, you know, this poem fits so exactly to the music." And Earth. and air, and rain. think about myself as a pianist so much and I think that perhaps if I came from a musical family I might think of myself more as a pianist. I think there's a distinction between identifying with an instrument and thinking about art um, and 
I think that both my parents really made made me understand that or think that you know art is about expressing something uh, that's bigger than us that's in the world and um, the technicalities of how you do it are are in a way less important <laughs> Oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> I was thinking about it actually in a pretty abstract way when I thought about programming it. I was thinking really about the music that's in that poem. It's an alternate universe. It's just off kilter. It's, it's a real saga, a real story, a real relationship, but just off. <laughs> I mean, there's something about it that is a little bit, uh, seems almost hallucinogenic. I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. there's something about it that yeah, I, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if Lewis Carroll was <laughs> a little bit, uh, you know, on another world <laughs> when he wrote that. The whole book, I mean, Through the Looking Glass is yeah, so yeah. strange. was brillig and the slithy toves did gyre and gamble in the wave all mimsy were the borogoves and the mome breaths outgrave beware the jabberwock my son the jaws that bite the claws that catch beware the jubjub -jub bird and shun the furious bandersnatch he took his vorpal sword in hand Long time the manxome foe he sought, so rested he by the tum-tum tree and stood a while in thought. And as in uffish thought he stood, the jabberwock with eyes of flame came whiffling through the telgy wood and burbled as it came. Oh, one, two, one, two! And through and through, the vorpal blade went snicker-snack. He left it dead, and with its head, he went galumphing back. And hast thou slain the Jabberwock? Come to my arms, my beamish boy, O oh, frabjous day, canoe, canoe! He chortled in his joy. was brillig, and the slithy toves did gyre and gamble in the wave. All mimsy were the borogoves, and the moam-raths outgrave. <laughs> <laughs>